Team Rippers, let's get ready to make a bag. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I have a brand new tutorial for you today. I'm super excited about this one. Um, this was the first time I have sat down and sewed this adorable pattern. I knew I wanted to do it as soon as I saw all the pictures of it coming out. It is the brand new one from Country Cow Designs and it is a collaboration with Amy Hutton of Bed Hog Shop. Um, I'm pretty sure Amy came up with the design of the bag and Joe wanted to help her come it come to life in a pattern. And so they worked together on this pattern. It is called the Ojima Crossbody. It's a mix of their names, Amy and Joe, spelled backwards. I think that's just adorable. I love the concept of that. But look how awesome this bag is. I am in love. I am in love. Um, it just turned out so adorable. It is a bound bag. It, I mean, it just, no other method gives you this structure for this type of shape of bag than binding. It's needed. Um, like Joe says, it's like a skeleton for your bag. She's so right. Um, I did forget to list the binding when I went over the material. So remember, you either need canvas strips or bias tape, pre-made bias tape. You can make your own bias tape, whatever you want to do. Okay, so let's go over this adorable design of a bag. I use the Kaya Faux Leather from Indo Love for my brown material. And then all of my cotton is from Hawthorne Threads. I don't remember the line. I'll have to try and look it up. I don't remember the line. And then all of the hardware is from my website, except for these adorable zipper pulls. I'm pretty sure those are Indo Love Creation as well. And the only thing I changed on this is the crossbody strap. She has one and a half inch rectangle rings and the strap connected right to the bag. I didn't have the rectangle ring, so I just made it D-rings with swivel clips and I used my seatbelt webbing. It worked out great. Okay, so you have this adorable big slip pocket on the front with the flap, magnetic snap, another magnetic snap closure slip pocket on the back. There is an option. I saw them do a video for this where they did a zipper pocket on the back. So like a, you know, a long zipper pocket here on the back. I will link that video below as well if you wanted to do that option. I think both are really cute. Um, I mean, it gives you a nice good space there. All right, and then a double zipper pull on top. And then inside is another zipper pocket. You can do a zipper facing on that, like an overlay if you want. I just did a regular zipper pocket. And then a slip pocket with a cute trim on it here. Again, it is bound, if you can see that. I did bind it with some black waterproof canvas. I feel like it came out really nicely and it was not a hard bag to bind. I followed all of her interfacing that she suggested on the pattern. I used Decaville Light and then foam down here in the bottom gusset and a woven on all my cotton pieces. I would do it the exact same way next time. It made for such a good bag. I love it so much. All right. Um, let's watch this video. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments, questions below. I'll try to answer them. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And let's start making this bag. Okay, let's go over our pieces for this crossbody bag. I pretty much am following the directions on what they suggest for interfacing and everything because I have never made this bag before. So, and I, I mean, all of it sounds pretty much what I would do. So let's just go over these pieces. I'm using um, the Kaya line from Indo Love, which is like a faux leather. And I'm using cotton lining pockets, some exterior pockets for my accent pieces. All right, so I have my four main body pieces. These are my two lining and to exterior, my exterior, I did put the Decaville light on it. You could also wait 
and slip it in between your two layers when you are sewing them up together. That's what they do in the pattern. I just went ahead and added mine on now because I didn't see a reason to wait for mine. Um, so it's whichever way you wanna do, just make sure it's like evenly placed on your piece. And I did interface all of my cotton pieces with a woven interfacing. So four of those, I have my uh, my gusset, zip gusset pieces. I have two, two lining, two exterior, deck of the light out of my seam allowances. Okay, and then I have my bottom main gusset pieces. One exterior, one lining. And in this pattern, one exterior, one lining, she um, has you doing foam on that bottom gusset piece. We will slip that in when we're sewing it up so it is not attached yet. Um, I am going to try that way. I think it looks like it'll give it really good structure along the bottom, which I always like. My cargo pocket pieces, I've got one lining one exterior again with just that woven on it. I have my exterior slip po pocket pieces, two of those. My flap for the front of the bag, two of those lining and exterior and I already have my Decaville light adhered on there out of my seam allowances evenly along all the sides. And then my zip and slip pockets, I have four pieces of that. Um, she has you doing a zipper facing for this um, zip pocket on the inside. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna do a regular zipper install, so it's up to you. She also has a cute little overlay in the pattern. You could do a cute zipper overlay if you would like to. Um, many options for that zipper pocket. And then I am doing the um, Oh, what is this called? It goes on the slip pocket. It's just a little accent piece for the slip pocket along the top. And then I have my strap tabs, two of those. The strap tabs are for one and a half inches. Um, and the strap in the pattern is connected directly to the bag. I'm going to do it separately just because I didn't have the correct hardware. I didn't have rectangle rings in the finish that I'm using. So I'm doing D rings and then just putting a regular swivel snap crossbody on the bag. Um, you need three zips, my nameplate, you need two magnetic snaps, zipper tape, crossbody strap hardware, and rectangle rings or D rings. And that is it. All right, let's start sewing this bag up. First thing we're gonna do is prep a couple of pieces. I've already prepped my crossbody strap again. I'm using swivel hooks and D rings instead of the rectangle rings, um, just because I didn't have it. So I've already made my strap out of some seatbelt webbing. All right, so that's already done. Nothing different and unique about that. Same method I usually do. All right, and then these are my D-ring connectors or your rectangle ring connectors. I got my line down through the middle, some double-sided tape, and I'm gonna fold my raw edges in and sew along each side and then attach my D-ring or your rectangle ring onto the connectors and put them aside.
you just want to sew them shut. Okay, so those are my D-ring and crossbody strap. And we are going to go to our flap. Here are my two flap pieces. I have already um, applied my Decaville and I have already done my slits for my magnetic snap on the lining piece, but we're not inserting the snap until after we sew the two together. So I want to, yeah, this way right sides together and we are going to sew the flap and we are following the Decaville Heavy, which is your seam allowance that you should be doing. So following right along with that interfacing is how the pattern goes. Ugh. My clip's breaking all the time. All right. And you're not sewing along the top because we do have to turn this flap through. All right, here we go. Just hand crank those corners and it really will make a difference. See how I went right along my interfacing there? And that is my flap. I'm gonna trim that down. I'm not going to trim the top, but these sides I'm gonna trim. Turn this out. Get that all laying nicely and then we will top stitch and then we will add our magnetic snap to that. All right. Now, if you're doing an all cotton flap, you definitely could take this to your iron and give it a good press but I cannot, so I'm just giving it a really good finger press. Ooh, those curves turned out good too. All right, there is my flap. All right, I'm gonna top stitch that.
Very nice. Okay, so there is my flap. I'm going to add my snap. All right. Here and here. And I do have an extra piece of Decaville to add to it. And I did put some uh, fray check on this as well, just to cover all my bases. Push that right in there, put the washer on top, and push those prongs down. I am going to cover it with a piece of tape as well. Now you could always put the Decaville light on the lining part um, if you wanted to. I could have done that, but I didn't up to you. All right. I'm covering those prongs with some tape. All right. Because you don't want those rubbing on the other side of your flap. Oh, I'm going to sew the top shut. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm just gonna sew the top shut real quick to make it easier. All right. And then I'm also going to just fold it in half and mark my center on this because I'm pretty sure I need that for installing later. All right, next step. We are gonna work on that front cargo pocket next. I have made some markings on the front and the back of my pieces. You can't really see this front side because it's so dark, um, but I did it on both since it was so hard to see. I also have my magnetic snap all marked out there and I have the slits already in place for my snap. I also put some fray check on the front. Okay, so you have your center line here and then she gives you measurements for this line and this line on both sides. I'm not gonna give those out. You need to purchase the pattern. Um, they're very straightforward. So I've got two lines on each side of my center line, all right? So on this first line, you're going to fold it underneath with the right side facing up and I am going to top stitch on the front side of this piece. So this is my exterior. Hopefully I'm doing this right. This is my first time doing this cargo pocket, but I think we can do it. It seems pretty um, well explained. So I think I can follow it pretty well. But who knows, I might mess up. All right, so that's my first fold. So my second fold is this next line here. And now we're folding it up this way with our wrong sides out. You could take it to your iron and fold it. I'm just gonna give mine a good press. That's why I marked on the front and the back side because I can see this line really clearly along the back. And now you wanna top stitch along the back part of this so my right sides are together, my wrong sides are out. All right, and so when it's done, it folds, it folds together super nice. Here's the back and what it looks like. And it just folds nicely down like that. So I wanna go ahead and repeat that for this side. So I wanna do the closest fold first. This one right here. Okay. And then we are going to top stitch that. And they do suggest in the pattern that you go top to bottom on all the pleats the same way. So it just doesn't shift weird. So I will do that. Okay, 
Okay, so there's my first one. So I need to do my second one here. And that's gonna be folded up. Right sides together, wrong sides out, and then top stitch down that one. That just folds together so nicely, just like that. All right, I'm gonna set that aside. Now I have the same deal with the lining. The only difference is my measurements are different on the lining piece, all right? It's gonna fit somehow with those different measurements. So I wanna fold it just like I did. Same process as my exterior piece but just different measurements. So pay attention to that different measurement. Oh, I didn't mark it on the back. Okay, right there. A minute. I'm going to mark this other one along the back real quick. It just makes it a little easier when you're putting the whole thing together. So that is my exterior and my lining. Now we should be able to, we're going to clip these two. Oh yeah, they are the perfectly aligned. We're gonna clip these two at the top here and I'm going to sew them together. this just a tiny bit over. There we go. All right, we're going to stitch that along the top. Right sides are together. We're joining the two lining and exterior now. Alright, we're 
gonna turn these right side out and we're gonna top stitch along the top edge here. Cute. All right. Top stitch that. I love pleated pockets. Now we need to add our snap in right here, which I already have the markings for it. So I just need to add my pieces. Okay. Decaville there just for a little extra protection. I'll have to trim that top off just a tiny bit. Got my snap on my front piece. All right, and then we are going to baste the pocket closed. And then we want to make sure the measurements on this are correct. We may have to cut down a little bit, it says, so we'll have to measure it. I'm gonna go and make sure my pocket is the correct size. If I need to trim, um, I'll make sure that I'm trimming evenly off both sides, okay? So it's all equal and this is still your center and then we'll come back. Okay, I just barely had to trim um, the tiniest bit off of each side of the bottom because it's kind of, you want it smaller at the bottom and then bigger at the top, not by much though. Okay, so now I want to put this on my front main exterior. So I'm adding or I'm lining up my center line right here and I'm gonna clip this on. And then just line it all up. So it will come out just the tiniest bit because it is a little bit wider up at the top. That's so your pocket has room. And that's a good thing. All right. My pocket is on. I'm going to baste it along all four sides. I am going to baste it from this way because I need to follow the curve there.
Cute. All right, and then I'm gonna add my flap. So I should be able to line my centers up here with my flap and clip that on. Make sure my pocket snap lines up here. Perfect. All right. I am going to baste that on the top. I should have added my logo to the front and I did not, but that's okay. It would have been cute. I could, oh, see, it would have been cute right here maybe on my flap or right down here. That's okay. I could probably just add it to the back. All right, there's our front flap. Next up. So I did go ahead and put my nameplate. I just unpicked the top part of my flap. I put my nameplate right there. I think that's a cute spot for it. And I rounded off these corners from installing this to the back panel. I'm gonna put that aside. We're gonna work on our back slip pocket now. I have already done the markings for my magnetic snaps and I did the slits so I can install that easier after it is all sewn, okay? So I'm gonna take, and that's my lining piece that the snap is on. So we are going to sew up our slip pocket. We're gonna do right sides together. We're going to sew along the top. We'll flip that over and then we will top stitch. After that's top stitched, I'm going to add my magnetic snap. All right, I'm gonna get my tape already out and ready. All right, we're gonna put this in. And I did put two little dots of fray check since it is cotton and I don't want it fraying. It can't hurt. It can only help. Whoops, let's put our, I'm doing a layer of Decaville white there. I'll trim that down. And put my washer on. And then I'll cover it with some tape. All right, after your snap is installed on your lining piece, you're gonna go ahead and baste your pocket shut. here I'm going to mark I have my centers marked on both pieces so I lined those up and I'm just going to clip it first we need to mark our snap placement here so I don't know if it'll show up if I press it I'm going to try All right, and 
there is my snap placement. I will add that real quick. Put that on there. And I don't have to do an extra layer of Decaville or anything behind it because it does already have this behind it. So it should be okay, but I am going to put tape to cover up those prongs. All right, that lines up. I am now going to just baste this pocket on. a minute. It's got a little bit of a give here. Here we go. Oh, I should have done it the other way around so I can see that curve. I'm going to do it this way. There's also um, on the Country Cow Designs channel, YouTube channel, she has an example of how to do a really cool side zipper pocket on the back piece that I think would be super cute on the back of this as well. It's just like a side zipper pocket instead of a slip pocket on the back. I like that idea too, but there is my slip pocket. All right, let's work on our main zipper. I have all my main zipper panel pieces. I have two lining, two exterior, and one zipper tape. I have marked the centers of all of it just so it all lines up nicely. I'm not going to install my zipper pulls. I'm going to do a double, double zipper pull, but I'm going to add it after I'm done just so it's not in my way as I'm going. Um, if you struggle with that and you don't think you can do it, then add it on now and you'll just have to maneuver those zippers in and out of the way as you sew. All right, so I'm gonna put these, my exterior and my zipper tape right sides together, marking up my centers and I'm going to baste the exterior on first and then I will add the lining piece. And I'm going to add the lining piece to the back here. Oh, <laughs> to this side here. And find my centers. And line it all up. So you got that zipper sandwiched in the middle. All right. And now you do it at your full seam allowance here. After those are on, I'm going to flip them up and over. So right sides are facing out now. 
and I'm going to top stitch that. Now I have already added in my Decaville light to my piece. Um, they have you slipping it in after the fact, but I have already added mine. But if you are afraid to fuse to whatever material you're using, that is a good option to slip it in after the fact um, and then sew it in so you don't have to worry about putting heat on your material. And then I'm just going to baste these two layers shut. Careful not to sew over my zipper there because I do need to install my zipper pull still. Okay. There's the first half, so let's do, looks good, let's do the other side. So I am following the same steps. I'm gonna put on my exterior piece first and then I will add my lining. There's my zipper panel. So my next step, I wanna add my poles. I don't wanna forget that. So I'm going to add one onto each end. All right, I like to just separate them right here and then add each one on. This takes practice. Um, <laughs> I've not been always able to do it that quickly. <laughs> It took lots of practice, so just be patient. You'll figure it all out as you go. That's why you also leave yourself a little bit of extra tape on the end of here, because it is easier if you have that extra tape to put your zipper on with. All right, ooh, cute pulls. All right, that is on. Now we are going to add my connectors. Um, All right, so we are going to add them and center them right there. We want a little bit hanging over. She tells you the instructions what the lineup exactly is of all of that. And I'm going to baste that on. And do the same on the other side. Ugh. That hurt. Jeez. Someone needs to invent plastic clips that don't break all the time. All right. Beautiful. All right, so there is my top part. I want to take my bottom gusset pieces. Here, got my foam. And these two pieces here. Let's make sure our widths add up. Oh, mine's. So my zipper gusset that we just sewed is a tiny bit bigger than this piece. So what I need to do, like barely an eighth of an inch on each side. So I'm gonna take this to my table and just trim down evenly off of each side very slightly because it needs to be the same width as our bottom zipper gusset. So I'm gonna go do that. And that happens just because everybody's machine is different and how you measure 
uh, the seam allowance against the zipper, it could be different. So I'm gonna go ahead and go trim down my zipper gusset slightly so it matches the bottom part. So I barely had to trim an eighth of an inch off of each side. Okay, so now I'm going to take my exterior bottom gusset piece with my zipper panel. I'm gonna line up these two ends here and we're gonna finish making the full gusset circle. So I'm gonna clip this together and I'm gonna baste this on first. And you might have to get some help going over this piece right here. Your connector piece, especially if you are sewing on a domestic, I like to fold a piece underneath my foot you can use a hump jumper if you need mine's going over okay but give yourself that help over if you can't do it on its own all right and then you want to flip it over and i am going to be adding my lining here okay and then I'm gonna do that at the full seam allowance. All right, so that's what that looks like, front and back, after you have those two pieces, you want to fold them each back and we are going to top stitch. Now, I did not put my connector as far in as they suggest in the pattern just because I didn't want to have to switch to a zipper foot when sewing this part. So if you did it with the measurements she has in the pattern, you may have to switch to a zipper foot to get by your connector, all right? So keep that in mind. And I'm just putting this back here just in case it wants to tear up a part of my faux leather there. All right, looks pretty. So that's what I have on this side. All right, now we wanna do the other side. So you're going to pull your exterior piece, the other end here, and we are going to pull it up to meet the other side, making it a full circle, okay? And then same steps. I'm gonna baste this piece first and then I will add the lining. All right, and then I wanna grab the other end of my lining, pull it up to meet this other side, clip, and then we'll sew. turn my pieces out so I can top stitch. I like to slide, I slid the top half underneath my foot there so it's not gonna get in my way as I sew. All right, 
So the next step, we want to clip these pieces together. All right, evenly. And I am just gonna sew one side first, and then I'm going to slip my piece of foam in between the two, and then we'll sew up the other side, all right? Okay. going to take my foam, slide it on in there. And you just want to get it laying in there nice and flat. And then we will baste the other side shut. All right, that looks good. Just gonna clip it all together here and I will baste it. Okay, there we go. I wonder, um, oh, you want your foam on the front part. Um, you want your connector behind that foam. That's what she says in here. So we will do that. Oh, I did it on this side. <laughs> I just didn't do it evenly on the other side. Okay, there we go. is our gusset. The last step we need to do for this is mark all of our centers because you need to have those all marked out for when we add it to our main pieces. So I'm going to line up these side seams first here and I'm going to clip top and bottom. Mark it however, whatever way you like to mark your centers. Go ahead and do that. And then here, I might already have mine marked. No, I don't, okay. Oh, that's right, because I trimmed it off. And then you have to do it the other way as well, because you need all sides marked. Okay, so not just top and bottom. You need all four sides marked. So I'm going to line up my center clips here now and then mark my other side. Okay. Sounds like a herd of cattle live upstairs. 
All right, there we go. My guess it is done. We will continue to the inside pieces. I'm going to work on the inside slip pocket. So she has a method for this slip pocket that says it gives you neat corners on the bottom. So I'm gonna try this. So you mark an inch up from the bottom on both pieces and then you fold it up to that inch mark and you iron it. All right, so I've done that on both. Now I'm going to take them together here and we are going to clip these two pieces together and I'm going to sew just along the two sides. Not the top or the bottom because I am doing a trim along the top. All right, and this way she says it gives you a neat corners and they're not bulky. Okay, so let's try. So I'm just sewing up the two sides. And now I'm going to turn this right sides through and I'll probably bring it over to my iron over there and give it a good press. All right, and then our bottom is nice and flat like that. Okay, I'm gonna take it over to my iron and just press it really good. Okay, so it's nice and pressed. Next, I wanna put the trim on. So I'm going to sew this top shut real quick. Just baste it shut. So this is the non-folded edge part, okay? This is not the edge that I folded, it's the top. Folded the bottom. All right, and then here's my trim piece. I'm doing something a little bit different. I put my middle line on there and then I put a piece of double-sided tape on each side of that line so I can get this evenly on my piece. So I'm lining that up along that line and then I'm going to fold it over and try to get that as even on there as I can. You should have a little bit extra on the ends and that's fine. It's better to have extra than not enough. Okay, now I'm going to sew this trim on with just a top stitch here. And now I want to put it onto my lining piece. Did I get it in the back? I did. Look how nicely that lined up. That did really good. Okay. So here is my lining piece. I have my centers all clipped. I have my markings on there for where I want the pocket. I'm just going to fold mine. You can, you know, measure and mark your center however you want to do it. I'm just about right there. That looks good and even. You can pin that on, you can clip that on by like folding this up and clipping it however you wanna do it. I'm just gonna hold mine in place and now I'm gonna sew this on.
You could also have taped this bottom shut or glued it. I didn't. I'm just holding it where it needs to be. So you could do that too. my slip pocket. All done. Let's go over to my zipper pocket. So the other side I'm doing a zipper pocket on, but I'm just doing it my method. I'm not um, doing the one she has in the pattern. So if you want to do it the way she has in the pattern, she has a fabulous tutorial. I will link it down below in the description. Um, I'm just doing the easy pocket, <laughs> is what I call it. So I've got my markings on my piece. I've marked out where I want my pocket on this first pocket piece here. And I am going to sew around my rectangle. Right sides together. All right, I'm gonna cut this out. You got that little V shape there on the corner. Do the same over here. And then I'm going to turn this through and I will take it to my iron and give it a good press. And then we'll install the zipper. So I turn it through. So it's along the back like that. I'm gonna go take it to my iron, give that a really good press, and then we'll install the zipper. All right, I'm gonna take my zipper. I've got double-sided tape on each side of it. I'm gonna insert that into my rectangle box here and I will sew that on. I like to do the bottom first and get that in place and then I will do the top.
Okay. There's that. And now I will add the back piece of my pocket. I'll just put it right on there. I don't have to leave a hole open because we are binding this bag. So I don't need a hole to turn through. So I'm just going to sew this completely on. There's my zipper pocket all done. I probably will trim just the tiniest bit of tape that's poking out there and we'll move on. The next thing we need to do is put our two layers together because we are binding this bag. So we need to make this lining and exterior one full piece. So I am doing my front exterior with my slip pocket piece. I'm going to line up my centers. I'm gonna clip these wrong sides together so my right sides are out. And then I will baste these pieces together to make one full piece. Okay, so we will have two front and back panel pieces and then our gusset that we will be putting all together. Okay, I am going to baste this now. So this is what your piece should look like. Make sure your pocket is going up in the right direction, same direction as your exterior panel piece. And now I'm going to baste the two pieces together and then I will repeat with the other two panels. Turn it over, make sure you got all the lining and the exterior together. I'm good. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside and do the same thing to these two pieces. Make sure they're going up the right directions. You don't wanna put your lining in upside down. Make sure you got both pieces. Yep, looks good. All right, so now we need to work on our gusset. So I wanna get my exterior front piece and here's my gusset. I have all of my centers clipped on all of my pieces. We are now going to add this gusset to this front piece, okay? So we're gonna be doing snips around these corners. Let me move it out here. We have a better view. Okay. I am first just going to attach all of my centers and get those in place. And then I will unzip my zipper gusset because it is easier to install it all when it's unzipped. 
I have never done this bag before, so I don't know how tight or loose this gusset is going to be or if it's going to just fit perfectly. I don't know yet. Every bag is different. You want to make sure you're clipping right sides together so you should see the wrong side of your bag out here. And then I'm going to do this corner here or this side, not corner, this side. We could do staples if we wanted on our corners. If I feel like it needs it, I might. Or she suggests in the pattern that you can hand baste. So you have a couple of different options to choose from. Where is it? There it is. And I do a lot of clips, so <laughs> be prepared. All right, so to get these corners to lay correctly, we need to clip into our gusset. So they're not big. They're an eighth to a fourth of an inch because your seam allowance is a little bit bigger than that. So you don't want to clip bigger than your seam allowance, okay? So don't go crazy with the clips. All right, there's my clips. And then I'll just fit that corner right in there. Ooh, that fits nice, okay. That is a good fit. All right. So it should lay just like that. And then I'm going to repeat for all three other corners here. One more to go. Oh yeah, I said I would unzip this. It will help. Let's unzip this. Yeah, that just makes it a little bit easier to get it all in there. my gusset all clipped into place. I'm gonna go ahead and sew that on um, and then I will be putting binding on it.
So just take it nice and slow around those corners and you shouldn't have a problem. Okay, let's see how that looks that first time around. I'm going to turn this out and see if I have any like big wrinkles or areas of concern. Looks good. Good. Yeah, that looks nice. All right. That first time around, it looks really nice. Those corners were not that hard. I just took them slow and they didn't really move that much. So I don't feel like I needed to hand baste or staple anything. All right. I'm going to go get my binding and we will put it around our edges. So I just have a one inch strip of waterproof canvas cut out. Um, I'm going to fold it in half and I am going to wrap it around my seam and that is how I'm going to bind this bag. It's nothing fancy. You can make or you can use bias tape. Um, they sell pre-made bias tape and I've had I have used that many times. Um, either way is great. It's kind of just whatever's easiest for you and whatever you have on hand. This part really does not have to look um, perfect. We're not going for a perfection here <laughs> because you can't really see the binding on the inside of the bag when you're done unless you are a bag maker and you are examining the bag. <laughs> Trust me, go look at ones they sell in the store. You will be shocked at the quality of the binding of the store ones. Um, so don't be too hard on yourself on the binding. The nice thing about the binding, it gives the bag such a nice structure. It's like the designer of this bag, she explains it as it gives it a skeleton, which is so true. It just gives us this nice, awesome shape. So there definitely is a lot of advantages to binding a bag. So don't count it out. All right, I'm going to unzip this zipper too because it'll make sewing this on easier. So I'm just going to clip it all the way around and then we will sew it.
The trickiest thing about sewing on the binding is catching both sides of the binding the way I'm doing it. Um, if you do it like you are binding a quilt, you could, you know, open up your bias tape completely, sew your raw edges on, flip it over, and then top stitch. I have done that before. I just don't feel like that's all necessary on a bag anymore. So this is the way I do it. All right, and then you're gonna have a little bit of an overlap. I'm just gonna trim that off a little bit over where I want it. Nice thing about canvas, you can have these raw edges and you'll be fine. It should not unravel. Okay. I've got it all clipped on there. I'm gonna sew that. Stiletto tool is super helpful. And here we go.
All right, there's my first side done. I'm gonna flip it over and take a good look at this back side here and make sure that I caught all of my binding on the back side and it looks like I, for the first time, caught all of my binding. <laughs> How about that? Okay, so that really gives it such a good structure. You'll see when we're all done and we turn this out, it's gonna look gorgeous. So now we are going to repeat the same steps for this other side, all right? I've got all of the backside cotton there. It looks great. It looks really good. All right, so we are going to turn this through. Here we go. Push it all out really good, roll my seams out. It looks good on all of my corners. Oh yeah, that turned out so good. All right, we just gotta put our strap on and we're done. No closing up pockets, nothing. And we'll just work that seam. <laughs> that is a cute design. Oh, look 
How adorable. Oh my goodness. All right. Put on my strap. And we are done. That's it. That's all there is. This was like, this was a really fun bag to make. I feel, I feel like this wasn't very difficult either. This was probably one of the easiest binding bags I've done. I don't know if it's just because I've done so many or they're getting easier or this one was just easy, but <laughs> I don't know. Look at that. Let me lengthen my strap just a minute. That is adorable. Oh my gosh. There we go. Hopefully this tutorial helps you put this cute bag together. I will link everything else below, all the other helpful videos there are for this adorable Ojima crossbody. Go get yourself a copy. This is just, this is just adorable. All right. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.